Uh-huh. You know, you got to remember in school, I used to have tutors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're an athlete. You know, sometimes we didn't do all the work, but we need some assistance. <laughs> so how's everybody doing today? So today is uh, a day that I always get excited about. I'm, I love speaking and I love engaging. I'm, I'm considered as a motivational speaker. So really the end of the day, when, when we go through this, kind of look at yourself individually. Um, don't look at other people. Look at yourself. Um, I know we're all eating. I normally do a little, a little, a little skit, but we might do that at the end. But I'm kind of letting everybody eat. But just, I know, uh, so if you got your cell phone, show me your cell phone. Even if it's in your, even if it's in your bag, just, just, just show it to me real quick, everybody. I need everybody to participate, all right? While we're doing this, just put it underneath your seat for now. Okay. Underneath your seat. <laughs> Do people know that cell phones is the most distracting thing on earth right now? Like, it's so distracting. I was at a dinner the other night, and I saw a family of six, and all of them were on their cell phones. Zero conversation. I remember when I was growing up, we used to eat dinner at the table. Um, no more of that. <laughs> we got Grubhub, and you got all these uh, Uber Eats, and I mean, you could just do anything. But anyway, thank you so much. So I wanted to talk today about, when you think about Rotary and Rotaract, it's, it's around service. It really is. It's around service. And uh, is this mic? Can I move around with this mic? I hate being still. Let me see. All right. So it's really about service. Let me ask you a question. What happens if you don't service your vehicle? Break down. Break down. Fall apart. What else? What else happens? Decreases in value. Decreases in value. It doesn't last as long. Right? So when you think about that, how many of us service our lives? Right? If you think about it, like service means to get something fixed, to get something looked at, to check it out. What's interesting is when you go to take your vehicle, you ever notice when you take your vehicle and they put it on a rack and they lift it in the air? And you have a tech that goes underneath to find out everything is going on. And they will also balance the tires. So how many of us have gotten underneath the rack lately to see what's going on with ourselves, right? Think about it. I told somebody this, if we had a video camera of everybody in this room, from the time you were 12 years old to now, what would we all see about you? What would we see? We see some dark moments. We see some disappointments. We see some things that we'll probably have to turn that video off. Especially if y'all saw my video. <laughs> y'all probably had to turn it off after the first 30 minutes. And so, um, but I just wanted to talk to you. We're going to talk today about service. Okay? So, the first letter in service is S. is solvers. We got to solve problems. Think about it. We got to solve problems in every area of our life. Mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, educationally, and from a relationship standpoint, right? We have to solve problems every single day. Has anybody ever had problems? Raise your hand if you ever had problems in your life, okay? Out of those problems, how often do you got to solve them? It's tough, often. It is really, really tough. I always tell somebody, if you want to solve a problem, fix yourself first. You can't fix nobody else. We got relationships in here. We got people that you married or a spouse or a significant other, kiddos, grandbabies. You can't fix them. The more you try to fix somebody, the more they push away from you, Right? But when it talks about service in the Rotary or Rotaract, we got to go out and solve problems out in the community. There's major issues. I'm talking about right now. They took diversity and equity and inclusion away 
from state organizations. That impacts so many individuals. And I'm not talking about politics up here, but what I'm talking about is reality. What, they have to change the name now? What is it now? What do they call it now? Institutional compliance. What does that mean? <laughs> right? So solving problems is the first letter in S, how to do service. Whatever problems you have in your life, you can solve them. I'm 53 years old right now. I'm actually seeing a therapist, ladies and gentlemen. It's nothing wrong with seeing a therapist. I'm dealing with midlife crisis. I'm, I remember I used to be 24, now I'm 53. I used to think when people were 53, they was old. We, we are. <laughs> but you know what, though? I see a therapist to get myself better, to get myself better. Just because you got, see a therapist doesn't mean nothing's wrong. But I, for myself, I have a grandson and another granddaughter on the way. I want to be my best me. So how do we be solvers? Next one is energy. Anybody ever bought something from somebody in here? Why do you buy something from somebody? You like them. Do you buy something from somebody you don't like? Do you tip a waiter or a waitress that you don't like? Right? It's service, right? So if you think about this, the energy, the energy that you bring is going to impact anybody around you. I'm going to talk about myself. My dad, he was abusive, physically abusive. That's the wrong energy. What type of energy do you want to bring, not just in the rotary or rotaract, but what kind of energy do you want to bring around your family members, around your friends, right? Because energy is something that you can't have. That's what I got. I got passion. I got energy. But I love talking about energy because when you have energy, people listen to you. This is not an amen speech here. What this is is talking about how do we service ourselves to be better for the community out there? You know the number one thing that's under attack right now is mental health. Mental health is so high right now, people don't even talk about it. It's underdiagnosed. Some of us have family members right now dealing with mental health. People always say this, drugs, alcohol, whatever. That, that's not what started it. What started it was mental health. So when I was back, back in my day, they didn't call it mental health. They said you was crazy. But it was mental health then, right? It's underdiagnosed. So how do you keep the energy going? The Energizer Bunny, you ever seen that commercial? The Energizer Bunny, as long as it has batteries in it, it will keep going. How many of us get our battery charged to keep that energy, right? It's around being around positive people, being around good people, and people that make an impact on your life. Everybody else shouldn't matter. You got, you got four different people. You got people that add and multiply, but you also have people that subtract and divide. That back half, people that subtract and divide, get them out your life because they're not going to make you better to have drive more energy. Good stuff? Anybody on their phone? <coughs> Here's a big one. Relationships. This is a big one here. Relationships are impacted today. I'm going to say the number one thing outside of mental health is this right here, relationships. Not to get biblical, but it started with Adam and Eve. The beginning of time. If any of y'all know the word, the first relationship that was created by, the, by God was destroyed. Relationships. So think about this. Some of us in here I don't care what your W-2 is. Relationships are impacted. Some of us in here have seen divorce. Some of us have seen physical uh, abuse, verbal abuse. And guess what? Some of us have experienced sexual abuse. It's real. It's real. And you know what it does? It impacts relationships. So how do we help the community? 
right? When it talks about relationships, how do you overcome relationships? What happens is two things drive mental health. Memories and lies. Memories is what's happened to you. Memories are things in the past. Tell me, I'll pay you a million dollars if anybody can stand up and tell me how you can fix the past. Come on. He said, don't live it. It's, it's for real. We get so bogged down on the past, it's nothing you can do about it. You got individuals that maybe you mad at in the past, they're not even living anymore, and they, you're still mad at them. How do you fix the past? Guess what? Focus on the future. You can't, you can't fix the past. And relationships, people not even, when's the last time we've been to a wedding around here? People don't even get married anymore. My daughter's 30 years old. My daughter and her friends are 30. They're still trying to find that spouse out there. Not taking anything away from the men, but they're also our females. Because they've been through so many things that's been catastrophic in their life, they don't trust any men anymore. But guess what? It goes back to relationships. You know how you fix relationships? Focus on you first. Focus on it. Another thing about relationships, there needs to be more forgiveness. There needs to be more forgiveness. You want to help in Rotary, you want to help the community, teach them about forgiveness. Some of us, if things have happened to us before, and we still haven't forgave that person. That person might be dead and still haven't. You know what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is forgiving yourself first for not forgiving that person. Next one. Victory. Who likes to win in here? Raise your hand. Who likes to lose? That's what I think. Huh? Man, you must been. He know my. He must know my story. I told somebody, my number one mentor in my life, my number one mentor in my life, is consequences. That's Todd Kelly's number one mentor. You know why? Because those were times where I lost, and I thought I lost, but it made me to the person who I am now. It made me victorious. So guess what? What is victory? Victory is when you make a difference in somebody's life. I don't know how many of you have role models or someone you can talk to, but the key is how do you become victorious? Victory is when you win. It's not about the wins and losses. It's about how do you win? Like you go to a UT, UT football for years. We didn't win. I had, to, I had to go in the airport, and I would have to wear my Tennessee stuff, and people would say, man, what happened to y'all? Y'all used to be the big dogs. Y'all used to be a powerhouse. Now I'm rocking my UT. Everybody said, oh, man, y'all good in every sport now. But it feels good to win. But only way you're going to get the victory, you got to have some losses. The losses in your life, I guarantee you, I don't know everybody's story. But I told you, if we could have everybody come up on their microphone right now and tell your story to everybody about your life and what you went through, I guarantee you, you could tell us about some losses, but I bet you got more wins than you got losses. It's about memories and lies in your head, right? But victories mean that you win. You win the game of life. Jimmy Valvano, one of the greatest speeches ever, he said, you could touch everything about me. He said, but one thing cancer couldn't touch was his soul. And I get that. Victory. Integrity. Woo! Raise your hand if you told a lie here before. So look, if your hand ain't raised, you're lying. Right? But you know what? I, I talk about the uncomfortable things that are not comfortable. Right? Anybody been lied to in here? You been lied to before? You don't like that person to lie to you. But guess what? What if we lie to somebody? I told somebody at one point, I used to be a Hall of Famer liar. <laughs> a Hall of Famer. I got the yellow jacket. <laughs> but you know what? 
all lies do, it impacts you as that person, right? And so integrity, what do we teach people out in the community? To be honest. You ever heard somebody tell you, the truth will set you free. It will. Anybody seen the show First 48 Hours? It's called First 48. What happens is you get the detective, they come in, the guy's there, a girl, and they know what happened. They already got the information and ask them, did you kill him? I'm like, no, I didn't kill him. <laughs> did you kill him? No, I didn't. Well, listen, we got you on video. We know everything about it. We're going to step out for a second. If you watch 48 hours, when they step out of the room, the person put their head down. Then they come back in the room. I said, we're going to give you one more chance. You got 60 years you looking at. Did you kill him? Yes, I killed him. Now, the person lied at first. Because they told the truth, you might not get 60 years, right? But think about people that sell drugs. We probably know people right now that are on drugs. The number one epidemic right now is popping pills. You can't smell it. You can't see it. And so what happens is you got individuals, they get in trouble with the law. You got all these buddies. But guess what? Soon as somebody gets caught, somebody going to tell. They going to tell. But integrity is within you. It's honesty. Yeah. And number one, I go back to relationships. The number one thing that impacts a relationship is integrity. It's lies. And so when you think about your life, how do you come across to everybody else? The last thing I know, man, you ever heard somebody, man? Man, you know Todd Kelly? Man, he a liar, man. He be lying about everything. Right? So think about that. What's your integrity look like in your life to impact in the community? Help people with that. Commitment. This is a big one. Has anybody had somebody part of an organization, but they never come around? You ever seen that before? Right? You ever had, even in church, you got probably 500 people, but only 10% of the people do the work. Even on Rotary, right? You got all these folks that come, but how many people got boots on the ground? I don't care what your W-2 is. You got people who will commit to something, but guess what? They never show up, and all they want to do is what? Pay their dues so they can get it right off. How do you commit? Commitment is going out and doing what you need to do because if you are a board member, you committed to that responsibility, do your job. If you're a teacher, you committed, do your job. If you're a student, you committed to come to Pellissippi College. You committed. You know how many people wish they could be in college? You'd be shocked the percentage just Google the percentage of individuals that go to college. Then also Google the percentage of individuals that go to college and start and quit. Don't quit. All you got to do is continue to commit to where you are. It doesn't matter if you get a degree from Yale or if you get a degree from Pellissippi. Once you got a college degree, you can do whatever you want. That's one thing nobody can ever take from you is your college degree. Raise your hand if you're going to be the first one in your family to get a college degree if you graduate. Raise your hand. Look at that. Look at that. That's impactful. Be the first one to get a college degree. So commitment to better whatever you do, right? Look, I got, five more. I got so excited. I put my little click on my back pocket. Here we go. <laughs> Execution. What happens when the Vols don't execute on the football field? What happens? What happens? It's ugly. It's ugly. What else? What'd you say? The play, the play fails. Look at you, young lady. You need to be a coach. <laughs> what else happens when you don't execute? You lose. Right? What happens when you don't execute in your marriage? You lose. You get a divorce. Raise your hand if you know about divorce. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know, even, even if you're not married. Raise your hand if you know. Look at his hands. What happens if you don't execute on your job? They get fired. Right? 
You don't make any money, she said. I could keep going on and on. What, what, let, let, think about this. What if you don't execute giving back to somebody who really needs your help? What happens to that person? You lose them. It's about service. It's about execution. Don't talk about it. Be about it. It's so many times that maybe some of us, we didn't have an example of that in our families. Your father or mother, whoever raised you, granny, whatever, you, we might not have had that example. Why don't you be the first one in your family to execute in life, to make a difference? I told somebody, whenever I speak, if I touch one person, I've done my job. I don't care. I ain't got to touch the whole room. Some people probably don't even give a day gone that I'm up here. But you know what? My job is to impact one person. And they take this talk from the rest of their lives of remember everything about service. Because we have to execute. We have to execute. No matter what. What if they execute that lunch right there? What would happen? <laughs> what would happen? You'd be hungry. Some of us say, where the food at? You know, some of us just show up for the food. I know in church, if it's a food, the church going to be packed. <laughs> right? <laughs> Execution. What happens if he don't execute with this camera right there? What happens? What happens? Nothing's there. Nothing's there. You're not going to get the results. Period. So. That's me on the left. And that's me on the right. I used to be 325 pounds. I was miserable. I hated myself. I didn't want to live. Thought about suicide. High, high blood pressure. Sleep apnea. My sugar levels, A1Cs, diabetic. Couldn't go up the steps. Couldn't tie my shoes. But you saw a smile on my face. But behind that was mental health. Mental health. 325 pounds. I was miserable. I know some of us in here, maybe it might be a space in your life where you might feel like I did right now. You might not have high blood pressure, none of that right now, but you might be in that dark space where I was. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, I was in my darkest space of my life. But then all of a sudden, 2018, August, that's me on the right. 225. No exempic. <laughs> no surgery. I had to execute and service my body. I said, you know what? I want to weigh the same as I did when I went to Bethel High School in Hampton, Virginia. My goal was to do that. You know what? I'm 6'4". 225 pounds, not a diabetic anymore, don't have sleep apnea no more, my kidney's not failing anymore, I can go up and down the steps except for my knee might give out because I got a bad knee. But I made the church to, a choice to service me. I had to service me. And so when I look at this, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I'm going to be honest, it doesn't matter what your W-2 is. It doesn't matter how much money you make. How are you going to make an impact and service in this community? Because they have the Rotaract, uh, Rotaract right? They, it started, I guess it started, then they had to restart. just started back in, we said 2020, 22. 22? Y'all will be recruiting individuals for this, for everything we just talked about. Servicing. So at the end of the day, service, Rotaract, Pellissippi Community State College. What impact is everyone going to make in here? So on your feet. We got to do something real quick. I think everybody, let's get on your feet real quick. I need everybody to participate. And I'm watching. I can look over and see if you're not participating. 
Guess what happens when you don't execute everybody? Woo! All right. Let me see what y'all got. When I say one clap, I want you to clap your hands once. When I say two claps, I want you to clap your hands twice. When I say three claps, I want you to clap your hands three times. When I say how you feel, I need you to say good as loud as you can. You ready? One clap. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, my goodness. This is, this is how it feels like when you go to play Alabama, LSU, and Florida before we run the tee and the locker room. This is how it feels. I want you to be able to feel what the University of Tennessee Vols feel like before they play an SEC football game. Y'all ready? One clap. Ooh. One clap. Man. Uh-oh. Two claps. Uh-oh. Three claps. One clap. Two claps. Three claps. How you feel? Yeah, yeah baby. Woo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any questions? Do we, is it questions or y'all got to move on?